Hello and welcome to Review, a new series from Red Letter Media. I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. I'm Mike. Still? Still. Okay. That's a really clever title for a show, by the way. Thanks. Who came up with that? I did. It wasn't Rich Evans? Nope. Rich Evans wanted to call the show the Kevin Smith Hour for some reason. He also wanted to call it On Cinema. Yeah. Um, I think that one's taken, though. I think so, mm. yeah. But anyway, a lot of people ask for us to talk about movies we like instead of watching bad B-movies or bitching about new Hollywood films that suck. Uh, and this show is not intended to replace Half in the Bag or Best of the Worst. No. So before anyone starts typing that into their YouTube comment fields. There's uh, already 120 comments asking that. You so. can stop. But really, we're here today to talk about one of our favorite movies of all time, Tremors. Occasionally, we may talk about a movie that we hate. You never know. Or a good bad movie if it doesn't belong on Best of the Worst, where we want to break it down a little more thoroughly. Yeah, and it's also meant to highlight movies that you may or may not have seen. Yes. And so uh, we're going to talk about, today, for example, we're going to talk about Tremors, and if, if you haven't seen it, maybe this episode of Review will motivate you to go and buy it, or rent it, or watch it. Rent it from your local blockbuster. Yep. So, Mike, what is so special about this Kevin Bacon movie about worms under the ground that eat people? Uh, Tremors is one of the most awesomest movies ever made. <laughs> uh, it, it is, for some reason, and you can say, like, I don't know, it does hold up. Absolutely. I've rewatched it. It, is, it holds up almost 100%, except for one shot. Uh, Tremors is like... It's like a Ghostbusters level film uh, where it achieves near perfection in every aspect of it. Which it, is ironic because the name of the town in the movie is Perfection Nevada. Perfection Nevada. It's like they knew. Yes. It's a hokey monster movie. It's a, it's a throwback kind of monster movie, but it is perfect in its uh, uh, execution, uh, creativity. Screenplay, the, structure. The screenplay is, is, is flawless. <laughs> um, and that's what I, I think that's a big thing for me because I'm a structure guy. Yeah. And there are other movies that I will enjoy that are completely structureless and, and just weird. But this, this movie is, is perfect. And I, and I think that's what I really like about it. And we'll talk about what the premise is. I love the creativity. Well, you mentioned that it's kind of hokey, hokey monster movie. I would say what makes it special is that it's not hokey. Mm -hmm. It's a hokey premise that's played uh, not serious, because it's obviously a very comedic movie, but the, the horror aspects or the monster aspects, are those are played straight. Uh, it's, it's the balance of the humor and the, the, the serious threat, I think, is handled really well. Look, these creatures are absolutely unprecedented. Yeah, but where do they come from? So they're, they're, it's like it has the Ghostbusters tone, where there's a serious threat, and there's humor, but it's very dry, and everything is, it's not like, there's no, no ghost that throws up ectoplasm all over someone's face, and they go, oh no, it got in my butt crack, and-, and Oh, Mike, I didn't know you hate women. What? Well, what's the premise? Well, the premise is, it takes place in uh, almost the middle of nowhere, Perfection, Nevada, population 14, right? It's 14, I believe. 14, it's a tiny little, it's not even a town, it's like, three buildings. <laughs> so there's a trailer, there's a yeah. one house, and, and Chang's a convenience Chang's store. Chang's convenience store. And uh, uh, this town has to deal with monsters, these giant underground worms with uh, little snake monsters for tongues, uh, and then just having to deal with this monster crisis. Yeah, well, how, we, they, how they band together as a town to deal with it. And that's one of the things I like too, is that people always think of this movie as like, Kevin Bacon's in it, but it really is an ensemble. Mm -hmm. It is about this whole town, and they're all really well fleshed out and really distinct characters. Well, that's, that's one of the, the screenplay elements that I absolutely love, uh, is, is how well it's structured. And in screenplay terms, your first 10 minutes are very important. Mm -hmm. They're, the, they're the, the 10 minutes, 10 pages, are, are what hooks you in. We get introduced to, um, to Val and Earl, uh, Fred Ward and Kevin Bacon, and uh, they're junkers. Wait, Fred Ward and who? Kevin Bacon. 
and Kevin Bacon? Yes, yes. And ironically, throughout the entire film, there is a group of tremors under the ground that keep following him. Oh, I get it. No, no, you shouldn't. And very early on, it's established that they have a case of the not gays. You will have long blonde hair, big green eyes, world-class breasts, ass that won't quit, and legs that go all the way up. And they run into a female college student who's a, a student of seismology, who's, who's maintaining the equipment that read the tremors under the ground, aka love interest. Great! <laughs> um, and then throughout the first 10 minutes of the film, we, we are introduced to almost every major character. Mm -hmm. uh, Burt Gummer, played by Michael Gross, the dad from Family Ties, Reba McIntyre. The little girl from Jurassic Park and her mom. The little girl from Jurassic Park bounces around on a pogo stick. <laughs> her mom is played by uh, Charlotte Stewart, who's a David Lynch regular. Okay. She was Mary X in uh, Eraserhead. All right. And that's what I like. Lots of, lots of good character actors in this. Yeah. Because then yeah. there's Chang, yep. who is played by the actor that's been in multiple uh, John Carpenter movies. He was Egg Shen in Big Trouble in Little China. But really, like, um, there's a lot of little things that get set up. <laughs> I think Chang's soda refrigerator, like when it goes through its uh, refrigeration cycle and it makes all that noise, I think they set that up. Oh yeah. But, but basically the uh, 10 minute mark is when uh, they decide to leave, Val and Earl decide to leave perfection. They say, screw it, after a septic tank hose breaks and squirts poop in their face. Uh, and they say, fuck this, we're out of here. And then, um, then they start encountering signs of the tremors. Hey, hold up. That's Edgar Deans. Jesus. You mean he sat up there three or four days? He sat up there and just died of thirst? And it's, it follows the, the Jaws formula of... Jaws did it just because they couldn't get their mechanical shark to work, but that was to the movie's advantage, where we just don't see much of the, uh, much of the monsters. And when you first do, it's the little snake thing. And yeah. you're like, oh, I guess that's it. And then it turns out it's attached to a much larger mm -hmm. creature. Stakes raised. We have gigantic underground worms that are killing people. And that, of course, leads to the discovery. The best thing of all in the film is that, and which is where the clever premise comes in, it's not just monsters eating people. Right. It's they're just animals that are hunting, but they hunt by, by vibrations. Yeah. when you walk on the ground or something, uh, that's how they get you. And I always love a movie where there's a group of people that are trapped in a situation, they have to figure their way out, yeah. and they have to do smart things, or they may do dumb things that get them into worse trouble, but I always love that kind of movie where instead of just like, shooting guns or we whatever. We have to kill it. We have to kill it. They have, they, they do it cleverly. Yeah. The, one of the most horrifying scenes in the movie is when Chang gets eaten. Ah. But yeah, that's, that's the moment where everything changes and they're like, oh, okay. Everything changes? Changes. This is a serious fucking problem we have. Yeah. And that leads into the middle 20 minute action sequence of the movie. That's just the best thing ever. The scene in the, in the Chang's market they all get up to the roof. The girl's on the, at first she, uh, she's on top of the shelves. Oh and yeah. And the tremors are pushing the shelves over. It's just great. And then like, it, it has the Jaws um, logic where we don't see the monster. You save money by not seeing the monster, by just doing smoke, mm -hmm. shaking the houses, but still has the same effect. You know they're down there. And that's almost I, I scarier. it's more effective, yeah. yeah. It's, it works better, because mm -hmm. it leaves more to your imagination. Yeah. And, uh, 
And throughout the film, they just keep getting smarter and smarter. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's another thing they establish, is mm -hmm. that they learn quickly. They, they learn very quickly, and soon they're going to pull the houses out from under them. <laughs> a constantly escalating threat. Yes, a constantly escalating threat, which is countered by constantly escalating ways to deal with the threat and coming up with ideas and uh, solutions. Yeah. And that's yeah, and really that's, the entertaining part. That's the great thing too, is that now we have these, these well-defined characters that are in this well-defined situation and we're rooting for them and they mm. have to come up with more increasingly clever ways to get out of it. Except for one of the best scenes in motion picture history. Oh, you're talking about the one that intentionally goes the complete opposite direction and just has them shooting? Yeah. <laughs> Bert Gummer uh, and his wife live, they're like survivalists, doomsday prep, prepper kind of people, and they have uh, guns and all that kind of stuff. And the, the creatures go and bust, one of the creatures busts through into their bunker into the basement. There's one shot that m made me l laugh out loud upon my most recent viewing, is they, they start shooting at it, and then the, the camera goes like this and pans over. A great comedy shot reveals an entire wall of guns. <laughs> and I just laughed out loud. And it's, it's the most amazing scene. A, a perfect mixture of miniatures and live action. This is like the best movies with lots of visual effects, especially like creature movies or fantasy movies. It's the uh, every trick in the book type movie. <laughs> The most amazing thing was, I think, the shootout in the basement because um, they had most of the head, enough to swallow Chang and all that, but they didn't have the entire creature. The thing busts through the basement wall, the cinder blocks, full scale. A couple shots later, miniature because it needed to go up and smash th through the ceiling. Yeah, but it's the, the combination, the editing of it and the, the way, yeah. you know, the, the choice of shots that really blends it all together. Th there's Except for the one. <laughs> but it mixed in with that is one of the most brilliant live action to miniature shots ever. <laughs> live action shot, life-size gun, miniature gun. And there's a couple of shell casings on the floor too. Well, that's it's, it's yeah, a fluid it'd be more movement. Obvious if it was yeah. that, you have to have that fluid movement. So it's it's like amazing, like just the simplest little trick like that. It's a shame they have that one composite shot. Yeah, I don't they know if they felt they needed to like connect the two more, but probably did, did the opposite of that. The the, <laughs> the 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 that whip pan move was was beautiful, and yeah. and that connected it better than the the, the clunky green screen shot. Uh, one other thing I noticed uh, on a recent re review of this film, sound and editing. Something that I didn't notice as, as a young person watching it, but now I do as, as a 58-year-old man, is watching it and going, well, that's, that's really well constructed the way that they did all this, because I noticed one thing, like, you'll have a scene, then the scene will kind of end, and it'll end quietly. And the next scene will start with some kind of loud noise. Mm. Because obviously the film's about, don't make noise on the ground. Yes. So Kevin Bacon, Fred Ward go to find the doctor. And of course the previous scene, the doctor gets sucked into the ground. The wife climbs in the station wagon. Station wagon gets sucked in the ground. They go there and it's quiet. and they have Kevin Bacon accidentally kick over a bucket, and then Fred Ward goes up and he walks down this like ramp. So they had them do actions in the scene. Instead of just walking out going, doctor, yeah. doctor, they had Kevin Bacon kick over a bucket, and they had him, uh, Fred Ward walk down a, uh, a ramp. Just little touches like that, and I'm noticing like, there are a lot of little moments in the movie like that before they know they can't make noise where they're unknowingly making noise when they don't really need to. Even when you're not really thinking about it. When you're not... It's just a regular scene going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, the cleverness of the filmmaking. There's also a lot of cleverness in the 
uh, the script. There's tons of setup and payoff, uh, and not in a way which can go bad sometimes when mm. it's obvious, because mm-hmm. uh, then it just becomes predictable. But this is like it, they set up things just you know subtle enough. Yeah, everything is everything set up. Turn it off. Oh. I got it. But yeah. Uh, I would be very proud if I was the guy or guys that created Tremors and the concept of it. Originally, it was Land Sharks. Oh, that was the like very the Saturday Night Live sketch. That's why they stopped. Okay. <laughs> the guy, the guy who uh, was the writer, uh, retooled it and stuff, and which was smart because yeah. Land Shark sounds terrible. Yes. But the the Tremors concept is. And, and that's another thing that's great about the movie, too, is uh, at least the first one, I don't know what they get into with the sequels, but basically they hypothesize that the tremor creature, the graboid, whatever you want to call it, is some kind of dinosaur or ancient creature yeah. that's just been out there in the desert eating little creatures and never been discovered by man because it's so remote. Yeah. They don't say it came from space. They don't say... Well, the characters little... theorize that it's... I, I still say it's from space. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> There's they're, jokes they're, about it. But they're yeah. like, you know, rednecks almost. Yeah. yeah but, <laughs> you know, the, the, the girl's looking at its fins and it has, um, it has sort of like a exo, exo armor, like... Um, exoskeleton nose yeah it has like sharp um skeletal nose so they can dig through the ground it's like instead of just a stupid monster it's very um uh, uh biologically sound the design of it has mm-hmm. the little fins and the nose and stuff that make it seem like it could be a real creature and that's part of the fun too is that it's not an alien it's not a dumb monster right. it's it's a biological creature that doesn't have any kind of motivation other than just it wants to eat. Yeah. But anyway, check out Tremors. That's our, uh, that's our spotlight film for today. You could skip all the sequels, except for maybe the fourth one. <laughs> Jay likes parts of the second I, one. I think they all have positive elements. Uh, not the fifth one. The fifth one's horrible. Uh, and the third one, the only good thing about the third one is that it brings a lot of those characters back. Mm. And that's interesting. Like the first one, the third and fourth one, like they seem to really emphasize characters first and then the monster adventure stuff kind of second they, they seem to really like their characters which is good what? they say there's nothing new under the sun but under the ground i thought i thought as a diehard tremors fan you would know what to say i know what happens in the movie i don't know what happens on the goddamn poster does Forget it say, it. but under the ground, dot, dot, dot? Yeah. Like that? Uh, uh, ellipses. But what do they mean? I need a nap. It's time to end our show. 